Hello and welcome back to the second part of this final Blitzkrieg after action report for the second battle for Chamon. On the left, first platoon of the Pioneer Company are crossing the ground between the woods and Chamon Centre. Armour and second platoon are providing base of fire. First platoon of the Fallschirmjäger company are moving through Shaman North. There is hardly any resistance here. Assault guns move up to support. Right, the HQ Jagd Hunter finds some stragglers. As it mops them up, it gets hit by hand grenades and immobilized. On the left, the smoke screen on Hill 480 allows the AT guns to move into their firing positions on Hill 490. One of uh, one section Yak Panther gets bogged down at the stream and throws a trap. First platoon of the Pioneer Company approach the east side of the centre of Shamal and take up base of fire position. Our second platoon to bound up. They move up on the left side of first platoon towards the easternmost buildings. Unwilling to risk more stream crossings, the rest of the armour is ordered to cross at the bridge in Grand View. At this point, 1st Platoon Falschirmjäger now occupy all of Shamon North and form up on the right flank of the Pioneers. They make contact as they approach the village centre. Stragglers and dismounted Sherman crews give infilading fires to the troops in Shaman North. The crew of the immobilized Jack Panther dismount from the vehicle to try and take some pressure off the Falcon Yager.
they have some success before they lose their nerve and run. Strategic update 4, 1645 hours, 45 minutes into battle. On the left, the AT battery on Hill 490 will engage the Sherman platoon on Hill 480. Although there is no tactical benefit to be gained from this, I'm curious to see what the outcome will be. The Fallschirmjäger and Pioneers are pushing towards the centre of the village. The Pioneer company are on the left, with 3rd platoon Pioneers being kept in reserve. 2nd platoon taken up on the left flank. 1st platoon in the centre. Flamethrower teams attached to each of the forward platoons and HMG teams in support. 1st platoon Fallschirmjäger in Schaumann North are intending to move into the village centre as well. However, stragglers and dismounted crews from destroyed Shermans are slowing their progress. To counter this, I intend to move 2 platoon of the Fallschirmjäger company onto the right of 1st platoon. Due to the terrain, the assault guns and Jagdpanzers can only provide short range support on the left, but on the right the terrain is more open and so can provide longer range support. As the 2nd platoon Fallschirmjäger company are going to redeploy further towards the front, their positions will be taken up by dismounted crews from destroyed Stugs. On the far left the smoke is cleared and the AT guns are in their firing positions. As there are no spots on the Sherman platoon on Hill 480, recon by fire is called for. All three guns are destroyed for the loss of one Sherman. In the centre, 1st platoon Fallschirmjäger sit tight in Schaumann North, waiting for support to arrive on their right flank. Centre left, 2nd platoon Pioneers push into the eastmost buildings in Schaumann Centre, with support from Stug platoon. Second platoon Fallschirmjäger prepared to move out. Two passing studs are available for transport for redeployment to the right of the front line. Third platoon Pioneers move up, and first platoon move to take the centre building for close support. Cruz is not convinced that the burning half track in the centre of the village is destroyed. That should do the trick. As the centre buildings are secured, contact is made across the stream in Shalmon South.
Strategic Update 5, 1654 hours, 54 minutes into battle. The move into Shaomorn Center is well underway. First platoon of the Pioneers moving into the center buildings, with second platoon securing the easternmost buildings. The Pioneer Company will soon have half of the center objective secured. First platoon Falschimjäger are still holding in Shaomorn North waiting for their right flank to be cleared. And this is the task of the newly redeployed 2nd platoon Falsham Jaegers on their right. Small arms fire is coming from Sham on south, however I am ignoring that as best I can at the moment until the centre objective is fully secured. On the right 2nd platoon Falsham Jaegers move forward with close support from Stolt and Jagdpanzer which shell the west side of Sham on centre. allows the Pioneers and 1st Platoon Falsham Jaegers to close in on the West Building. The surviving AT crews move into support trucks so that they can redeploy in Shaomon Centre. Third Platoon Pioneers come under 60mm mortar fire. they quickly spread out to minimise casualties. On the east side of the centre objective, the 2nd platoon pioneers move into the last two buildings. Center Stokes mop up. A flamethrower team move into the west building on the center objective. Right, 2nd platoon Falsham Jaegers push over the crest with Stug and Jagdpanzer support. As the Americans flee out of the centre of the village, the objective is secured. Focus now shifted to south of the stream. The forward observer prepares a fire mission for the east end of the southern objective. The gun crews and their trucks roll into the centre of Shaomon to take over the positions of the Pioneers and Falsham Jaegers so that they can push towards the final objective. Strategic Update 6, 1700 hours, 60 minutes into battle. With the centre objective secured, it is now time to plan for the move on the final southern objective. Third platoon Pioneers that had been kept in reserve are now brought up to the front. They will move to the eastern end of the Shaomon South objective, with 2nd platoon providing base of fire from buildings in Shaomon Centre. The AT gunners will relieve the Falsham Jaeger and Pioneers in the centre positions, and the support trucks will be used to resupply the machine gunners. 1st platoon Pioneers will move to the centre buildings in the Shaomon South objective, with base of fire provided by 1st platoon Falsham Jaegers. 2nd platoon Falsham Jaegers will be providing right flank security and Stugs and Jagdpanzers will pick out targets of opportunity. HMG teams rearm at the trucks, and the FO's fire mission comes in on the eastern end of Shaomon South.
the left, second platoon pioneers provide overwatch for third platoon as they bound towards Shaomon South. Resistance on the left has melted away to nothing. And the eastern end of Shaomon South is secured. First platoon move towards the centre of Shaomon South. As the terrain here is more open, smoke grenades are used to help conceal the advance. HMGs provide suppressing fire. They move into the centre buildings of Shaomon South without resistance. And secure this part of the objective. The focus now shifts again to the four farm buildings on the western end of Shaomon South. This is the final part of the final objective. In Shaomon Center, 2nd Platoon Pioneers and 1st Platoon Fallschirmjägers mount up to move out. Far right, 2nd Platoon Fallschirmjägers mount up on a Stug and Jagdpanzer. Center, Stug from 2nd Platoon crosses the bridge to support the 1st Platoon Pioneers. Ah. Center forces redeploy for the final push. Pioneers and 1st Platoon Fallschirmjäger approach from the east and 2nd Platoon Fallschirmjäger approach from the north. Each element has a Stug in support. Approaching two sides the remaining Americans are overwhelmed. and the final objective is secured. And we have a Luftwaffe major victory. I have managed to secure all of the objectives and some points for causing enemy casualties and minimizing my own. We can see that the enemy has 76 men okay, total of 231 casualties, 15 tanks destroyed and five armored vehicles destroyed. I have 224 men okay, 71 casualties, and five armored fighting vehicles destroyed. I also had uh, two Jagdpanzers immobilized, one by bogging in a stream, the other one by damage from hand grenades. And one Stug had been so badly damaged earlier on that its main gun and machine gun didn't work. However, it did have its use uh, for scouting ahead of the other assault guns and tank destroyers in the more built-up areas. So taking one last look at the map, you can see the dominance of the objective is complete. A token element of HQ teams and destroyed vehicle crews are holding Grand Dieu, with the main force securing the three objectives of Chalmont. This was another enjoyable scenario. I particularly enjoyed the epic battle in the first video that I made of this scenario, uh, where my Stugs engaged the uh, enemy 
Sherman's. It was a particularly nerving few minutes of gameplay, particularly when other Shermans kept uh, popping up in the distance and uh, in Chamon North. That pretty much brings this after action report to an end. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed playing the scenario and editing this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, leave a comment, feel free to subscribe. I'm Josie Wales, War is Hell. Thanks for watching. Thank you.